This is Scott with Second and No One Canine Life Coaching. And I have a thought for you. What if most reactive dogs are not fearful? What if they're not fear aggressive? They're not, they don't have fear aggression. The way I see the emotional systems being they're evolutionary and they're built upon each other and they highly influence each other. Near the top when your dog is social and if you have an, a relationship whatsoever with your dog, they're gonna be towards the top after care, comfort, touch, that kind of stuff, is a panic, panic grief system, which is your basically your separation, uh, your, your panic distress. You need to launch in dirt. If you have your panic distress, that means you're seeking out help and comfort. Rage means you're gonna fight for survival. Fear means you're gonna run away from something you can't fight. It goes seeking, Rage, fear, care, panic, anxiety, lust, and then play. So if you have a dog that's willing to play, you're pretty happy. You're being social. They're learning. Cognitive functions at its finest. Every, your, your, your brain's being enriched. Hunter, I see it. Thank you. Over here. Okay, Wiley, last one. Because you're tired. So when you're at the top of those emotional, the emotional ladder, when you're being at your most social, you get something that startles you, makes you uncertain and nervous. I call those secondary emotions, as in they're not, you're not fighting, you're not running away, you're still thinking about what you're supposed to and assessing the situation. Thank you, Wally. We're done. I see you, Hunter. What does that mean? When your dog's still with you, barking, able to listen, standing close to you, that's your panic grief system. So not drop down into the lower most primary processes, emotional systems that are innate, you're still able to make decisions and gather more information. You'll especially notice that if your dog acts out and the trigger leaves on its own, whether it's a dog walking by and the dog kept walking, your dog's acting out and then it stops and settles and starts smelling for that other dog. That is a dog in the panic grief system. It's reactive, yes, don't get me wrong. It's not feeling fully safe. But it's not in a fear or rage system and it's not in being aggressive. I see you, Hunter. Ready? Come here. So if your dog is acting out, there might be a chance that that is a form of communication to tell you, I need help. They're not straight along attacking because anything that's aggressive or is rage isn't going to give a bunch of warnings. When you go to fight somebody and you're angry and you feel like you have to survive and it's not just a matter of pride with humans, you're just going to go after it to where you feel safe enough. And I've seen a lot of dog fights and I've had to break up dog fights at dog parks. The ones that are dead serious about fighting grab and hold the other dog doesn't know it doesn't stand a chance if they really truly feel threatened and they get a hold of something they're gonna hold on they're just gonna charge and grab it no trash talking no nothing that's rage that's the dog's feeling this is the only way I know how to survive this because your seeking system the very bottom that keeps you alive will tell you how do we find a positive through a negative if I have to fight it, I will. That's rage. If I can run away from it, I will. But neither one of those are positive emotional systems. Both of those, they're not social emotional systems. So if they're not social, they're antisocial, meaning you don't matter. The reason why I say most dogs are in a panic system is because we raise them. We influence them. They have no real reason to be afraid of anything. They can be fearful of something, as in they can be afraid of it. They can be uncertain about it, not sure how they're supposed to handle that situation. But it doesn't mean they're in a fear emotional system. It doesn't mean they're so far afraid that you can't handle anything. The ones that are fully fearful, thunderstorms. Dogs that sit there and shake, that don't know what else to do. Those are dogs that are directly influenced by their fear, primary emotional system of fear. 
deep down in the brain, your lower brain. Not your upper brain, but your lower brain, your limbic system. All that information was gathered and they said, I need to drop down into my fear system and nothing else matters. I need to drop down into my rage system and nothing else matters. Because a lot of times, because we raise them to help them feel safe, we provide for everything, that when they feel uncertain or they're stopping and fiddling and fidgeting and freeze, are influenced by fear, are influenced by the fear emotional system. Hunter, thank you. Good cut. Thank you, Wiley. So if they're influenced by it, they're thinking about it. They're thinking about having to drop down and how they're going to survive this. But if they cry out, they bark or something else, and we react, we're meeting that need, but maybe not in an appropriate way that's helpful for the dog. So that's why I look for subtle signs of the dog slowing down, the ears perk up, all that attention. The freeze is very important. The faddling, fiddling is pretty important too because then they're starting to gather information. We call it this, people like to call it displacement behaviors or appeasement behaviors. That's them trying to figure out the best way to deal with that situation. That's the panic grief. They're not into fear yet. They're not into rage yet. You can influence by comforting your dog, seeing if your dog will come over. If not, I will grab the leash and we will stop. I got you. Probably not the right dogs you can't see, but I've got Barney. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. Yeah, I've got you. Thank you. I've got you. I see him. You see it? I see it. Are you ready? Thank you, Barney. All right, let's go. And we leave together. Thank you, Barney. After they leave, they start to feel safer because that threat is no longer that big of an issue. Touching brings out oxytocin. It's, uh, it's effective neuroscience. It's scientifically proven with MRIs and fMRIs and all these other imagings. It's been proven. You to go near something, you touch something, you're positively affecting the brain. Thank you, Hunter. Stop. You're releasing oxytocin. Thank you. They start to feel better. You're with them. You're building on a trusted source. You're handling that stress. So again, I think our dogs, our domesticated dogs, are more into the panic and grief system than they are the fear system. Think about it when your dog is stopping and looking for you when there's something stressful. And I'm not saying just eye contact, I'm saying do they slow down? Do they get just to the end of the leash without pulling? That means they're aware of their environment. Do they stop and kind of back up? Do they wait for you? Even if you walk up, is the dog still keeping pace with being under that six foot leash? Or whatever leash you're using? That means they're aware of you. Thank you, Wiley. If they're aware of you, they're gonna seek your help. They're pretty much asking for help your guidance. What are we going to do next? That thing scares me, but I'm not fear. I'm not my primary emotional system. I'm feeling unsafe. Can you help me? You go to help them. You're helping them build resilience. You're helping them feel safer. Oxytocin gets released. They get back into a more positive emotional system. Care is a, po a completely positive emotional system when you're just helping them settle down and feel better. Once they start to feel better, they're probably gonna to have to go to the bathroom because stress chemicals get crystallized and released through urine. They go to the bathroom, guess what? A lot of that stress has gone. The body says, I don't need it anymore. What's gonna replace it? That's up to you. That's where you can directly influence. You can get them to play. Maybe they wanna cuddle a little bit more. Maybe they wanna go run around in a little area without you for a second. That's fine, that's de-stressing. That's them reducing stress even more. So I don't think they're in a fear system because in fear, you're going to go shut down and relax and recoup, recoup because you're not being social. Fear is not a social emotional system. Rage is not a pro-social emotional system. You're, if you're fighting, you're fighting to kill or fighting to do it enough to feel safe so you can leave safely. Rage 
That's rage. If you're running away, you're doing it just far enough that you're safe. Once you feel safe, the body will crystallize um, your stress chemicals. You don't let it crystallize and leave the body. You're keeping it in the system. You see what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. So with that said, I've got these dogs that I'm working, that I'm walking, and they're not getting exercise at the moment. Thank you. Ready? So this is Scott with Second and One Canine Life Coaching. Think about it. Your dog is probably more. If you have a reactive dog, it is learning. It is somehow taught, been been taught that if I act out, you'll pay attention. If I get verbal, you'll pay attention. You didn't see me slow down. You didn't see me start sniffing when there's a stressor. You didn't see me gather all the information and you try to keep me going or something else. You didn't come for me when I needed it. So now I'm going to bark to get your attention. That's a panic grief where they're asking for help. They rely on us. We've raised them. 40, 14,000 years of social connections. Think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And ready? I go get you. I go get you, much. I go get you, much. I'll get you. Oh, yeah. Do you need some attention? Do you need some attention? Oh, you're so sweet. Good boy. Shake it off. Do you need to cuddle? You got the treat on your Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And to de stress from them just sitting here. Ready? Oh, I have, you lost my other ones. Wiley, this is yours. Take it. There you go. Hunter lost my other ones. So where'd they go, Hunter? Let's go find him. You did it. This is Scott with Second and No One Canine Life Coaching. Have a great day. Remember, think about it. Your dog's probably more in a panic grief system than it is a fear system. Think about it. Let me know what you think.